So where we're going to start with front setters is, is all in the shoulders. Uh, the biggest mistake that I'll see is people just opening their shoulders at takeoff way too much and making everything over rotate. And not only does it over rotate, you start to lean back and it pulls everything to flat. So if you're a little bit more stable with your shoulders and by stable, I just mean like you're not rotating, you're not rotating them like crazy and you're not uh, leaning back like crazy. Often they're paired together, but if you kind of can hold your shoulders a little bit more still, just at takeoff up to where you're getting to the top, uh, it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. You see this moment where like, there's not really any real rotation happening and then there's this spot where where it opens up and i think this is where people get confused because they think that opening that lead shoulder is like oh now we're just gonna pull it around the rest of the way and that board is gonna follow underneath when really you open your shoulders a little bit you know sometimes and then you bring your board to where your where that shoulder line kind of is. You see how they're you see how the the shoulders and the board get back together, right? It's not like they their shoulders open and then they stay open forever. I got this example of the stale fish to really kind of to prove that. Um. Stale fish is even more open than the than the uh, front side grab, but then coming in, same thing. Even that arm, even that right my right arm is a, is kind of in front of everything, and I I just say this to kind of prove that point that you're not like falling back and leaning and rotating that upper body and and bringing the board to follow. It's a big difference. <clears throat> this feeling of uh this feeling of falling out falling out of the top of the air and pointing your board where you want to go without I mean it's sort of the same point but let's just focus on the board for a minute is once you're at the top, you really have to turn that board into where you want to go. And it's going to feel like you're going a little bit backwards. It's going to feel like you're dropping kind of straight back because you're not looking around the corner where you're going. Like you're not looking at the flat, like you're not looking at the flat bottom here. I'm kind of just staring at the board. I'm staring at this front foot. I can see the coping, right, in in the vision. And that's just so I can see my front foot in the coping so I know I'm not going to hang up. So when I'm turning that board, if I'm a little tight to the coping, I can just bend the knees a little more. And I know if I'm going to flat, I can start to let those legs float out a little bit. But I'm not looking where I'm going. It's one of those it's one of those rare it's one of those rare cases where sometimes it's better to not look where you're going. It's better to get just a visual on that front foot on the on the front bolts and right through that at the coping so you can just see where you put that board down. Uh, and it feels a little blindside. It feels like like a similar to like a fakie half cab to fakie would feel like if you've ever done one of those you know you just kind of go up fakie and you let that board rotate and you watch the board rotate and you put it down fakie smith grind backside revert things like that frontside rock and rolls right there's that similar thing where you kind of let the board rotate 
and you watch it rotate and then you turn around and skate away right i think that's probably the biggest piece you know over going over hips it's not going to be that big of a deal uh or if you're going like this high or lower you know if you're at like four five feet high or lower this stuff isn't as big of a deal uh obviously if you're struggling landing it these are uh it's a good place to start to see if it helps but if you want to go seven feet, if you want to go nine feet, if you want to do frontside airs on mega or really boost, these are the, the pieces that are going to help when you're going real high. Like on mega, you can't even turn. You just got to go straight up and then feel yourself fall straight back and let that board rotate. And you got to throw yourself at the deck so you don't go to flat. Like all of this stuff has become super dramatic. Uh, and it all becomes less and less dramatic in that uh, sweet spot, in that like go zone of two to five feet on a regular full size vert ramp. You know, two to four on some of the backyard ramps. Um, <clears throat> I think take I think takeoff. We could probably do a little bit on on takeoff. The more patience you can have before you grab it, the better, right? Uh, tuck knees, especially, are kind of a tighter position. So those tighter positions sometimes take longer to get into. So waiting to grab so you can kind of set up your body in the air before your arm kind of takes that path around the knee and can get the grab. It, it, it can make your life a lot easier if you can go and wait and, and grab a bit later. If you can't grab later, which I completely understand, uh, I remember I didn't learn how to do these till I was way later. I mean, I could already do proper 540s and kickflip bindies before I had a good like frontside air, how, the the shape that I liked. You ask Andy Mack, he'll, he still makes fun of me. Um, if you can't wait to grab it, that's completely fine, but don't yank. Don't pull yourself out to flat and don't pull yourself around the corner. Um, you're just grabbing with your hand. Uh, and if it's not working, like if you're on a smaller ramp and you need more space, practice frontside ollies. Practice taking off the right way because... All of these pieces are about how we can end up going higher and higher when the ramps are bigger and when we get better. If you're grabbing and yanking, uh, it's just not going to help you go really high one day. So I would say don't practice that too much. Um, just as like close... Like, Guys, I guess like uh, closing thoughts on what we've been through. Be patient. Don't ra rotate too much. Treat it kind of like a fakie to fakie type, a little blind side. Let the board rotate. Don't be in a rush to look where you're going. Don't let that lead shoulder open and pull. Um, really have a lot of touch. Be patient when getting into the grab. Um, ah, this is a point that I forgot. When you're going real high, don't aim like this don't aim on the arc aim up into this let like if you're going to aim to if you're going to the right real big aim up into this left corner and then let it arc just like a little mental note like if you're if you're on this path and you want to and you and you're going to take that long front side air it really helps to hold that straight line up until the top and then letting it arc so like instead of instead of just coming on this line it's like straight 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 and then it falls out and that for some reason really helps me uh carry a lot of speed and to keep good balance up through this awkward part of that front center where you're falling out of it this one was requested absolutely a ton 
and I completely get it if uh, we need to do another one on this. So obviously, let me know uh, if, it, if anything is confusing. Frontsiders are a bit harder than, like they're a bit more complicated than I realized when I first wanted to learn them. Uh, and it took it took quite a while. So uh, I think this is a really good place to start. And obviously, this is all stuff that I haven't really heard uh, talked about before. So yeah, good luck. Go get them.